So what is going on dammers, my name is Meho and welcome to your 29th Angular 6 tutorial in which we're going to take a look at what directives are in Angular and I know it's a bit late but um, I guess we haven't covered directives yet as a tutorial, as a separate tutorial but we have used <clears throat> directives a lot in our previous tutorials um, so we're just going to go through directives real quick here so let's get started all right so first things first what are directives so directives as you know that they can add custom behavior to your html and basically the directives are just the attributes you add custom attributes you add on your html tag for example um, ng4 is a directive ng if would be a directive and basically I have a list of directives here um, directives can be your inbuilt and custom we're gonna go through inbuilt in this tutorial and custom in the next one so we have ng4 ng if ng switch ng non bindable which we're gonna take a look at that what it is ng class and this should be etc but anyways so let's get started with um, I guess we have done ng4 tutorial so you can take a look at that that tutorial link would be in the description if you want to go through that so let's get started with the ng if directive um, so here's our code and let's just go to and actually we are in the pipes folder anyway but we're just gonna test directives in this one only why like create a separate thing so um, our app.component.ts is here and let's just get rid of all of this code similarly in our html as well so we're going to take a look at how to basically make use of ngf so first of all let's just start very with a very simple condition let's just say i have a div and i write star ngf just like we would do um, inside here star ngf star ng4 and these stars are just structural directives syntactic sugar over your normal directives and i'm just going to tell you that real quick later on so um what the star ngf would do is that it would evaluate the expression inside your quotes now and if that expression is true it would display the content inside this div so let's just say two is greater than one which is true we know yes two is greater than one right we all know that two is greater than one now let's just see if angular also thinks that let's just reload this you can see that we get yes two is greater than one how about we change this to two is less than one now if we go here you can see that we do not get any output and the console as well no errors so that basically means two is not less than one simple enough now let's just get on to some little not so simple code let's just say i have a variable here um let's just name it some random variable so if this some random variable is true which is found in a template then that would be displayed here i can do something like this and right here i can say true to this and now if i can just move it here check i get yes if i change this to false hit save you can see that we won't get anything here all right now um, what we can do now is that from variable we can let's just say if this condition is not true then what i want to do well one fix is that you have conditions like this right so right here what we are doing is that pretty much saying that if um, this is true then display this otherwise display this well this is um, unnecessary this is adding unnecessary code to your application so what angular did is that it provides an else thing here which you can make use of to um, actually display content if this condition is false so to do that you have to add a semicolon after that write else 
and your templates reference here. Now, what do I mean by that? I believe I have covered that earlier as far as I can remember. Um, I'm not sure. So let's just go over that one more time. So else the name of the template here. So let's just say uh, the reference of my template. So let's just say this is other block content. Now what this other block content could be is that I can add an ng template here and make, give it a reference of other block content. And I can say here, um, um, let's just say no, something like that. So let's just take a look in the browser. You can see that we can get no in h1. Now the thing to note here is that I do not get this h1 surrounded by div. So ng if is apparently this else block is replacing this whole div. It's not appending this content inside here. So um, what you might want to do is that you might want to just create another template, another template for um, the true case as well so that you have a consistency in the code. So what you can do is we can say that this is false block and this is true block. Let's just say we have false block in here and for true block what I'm going to do is I'm going to say some random variable is true then I'm going to show this true block else false block okay so let's just make this true block yes and let's just get rid of this so now if you take a look in the browser you can see that we still get no but if we change it or let's just make something like um, just for demonstration purposes this dot some random variable uh, let's just get rid of this so here what we should see is that every second the content changes here right and whatever we can do what we can do here is that we can just customize this with a standard template block right so you you can just separate your template logic with your um, true false logic so we can just go here you can see now this is surrounded by your div tag all right so this is how basically you would work with ng if here now if we take a look at the next directive we have on the list is ng switch and ng ng switch is pretty much just like ng if it's the same thing we used to do in programming languages like for example um in javascript if you have if condition then do this else if do this else if do this and with switch you can do switch switch whatever condition and then case something case something case something and all that stuff so it's similar here um i can't go through over that real quick but i guess you would be able to do that yourself and in most of the cases in simpler cases you won't need ng switch anyway so we're just gonna stick with ng if for now what we can look at next is ng non-bindable well what this does is that for example let's just say i want to teach angular to people using angular framework so i add a heading here which says something like interpolation all right let's get started with our docs so i'm going to say interpolation is a way angular uses to display variables inside your html using the curly braces um, you can display um, let's just say a variable named name using name hmm looks good I believe we should be able to teach a lot of people right let's just get rid of this b tag 
uh, let's just take a look in the browser okay so we are missing a curly brace here there we go hmm something strange I'm learning about interpolation as a user so I read interpolation is a heading yep interpolation is a way angular uses to display variables inside your HTML okay you can display a variable named using hmm, something's missing here what it is oh so if we take a look in the code you can see that we are actually displaying the name value name variable we are trying to display that angular does not know that if i want to actually display these curly braces or actually want to echo the name variable so to fix that what we have is your ng non bindable data attribute or what am i saying this is a directive so <clears throat> ng non bindable what it would do is if i write ng non bindable it would pretty much output this thing as it is you can see that this is echoed out as it is without angular evaluating this expression so this is how ng non bindable would be used then we have ng class as well which um, you know you might have guessed that could be used to display a lot of classes based upon certain conditions so let's just say um, uh, let's just say I have something like data is line javascript used on web uh, let's just say lang is um, swift used on ios right we're good with these two only for now and let's just say i have a ul li ng4 let language let language of data let info of data so let's just say i'm gonna say info dot um language is mostly used on info dot let's just say use on obviously so um what we can do here to make use of ng class is that I can say something like span ng then ng class directive here and then I can provide here an object so when I provide an object here what happens is that it would add the keys of this class keys of this object to the span class if those expressions are true so as an example what I can add is JavaScript if info.lang is equal to JavaScript. Just as a matter of fact. So JavaScript. Right? So it would add JavaScript class. If info.lang is JavaScript, it would add Swift if info.lang is Swift right so yeah let's just see that in browser so you can see that we get javascript is mostly used on web and swift is mostly used on ios and you can see that right here we get a class of javascript because that was in fact javascript right and right here we get a class of swift because it was in fact a class of swift makes sense i believe yes so this is how your ng class directive works and we have covered ng4 as well, ng if as well, ng switch is your assignment, ng non bindable is okay, ng class is done, and there would be some other inbuilt directives which you can take a look later on if you require them. And uh, yeah, basically that's all for this tutorial. And in the next one, we're gonna take a look at how to actually create your own custom directives with Angular. So I'll see you then in the next video.
And one more thing, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.